So, uh, welcome Nishanji to this uh, edition of a uh, fireside chat by Plugin India, and uh, we're going to take you through a few uh, general questions about the EV industry and a few specific questions about Pure EV as a company, right? And uh, you know, we kind of want to hear your views about uh, these things. So, let's start with uh, the company first. And uh, what's the feedback about Pure EV products? How are they performing? Uh, in the markets, uh, how many dealers, which are your higher selling products. So if you could just throw a little bit of light on that. Yeah. So coming to Pure EV products, uh, the, the response has been fantastic, especially since last uh, eight, nine months, because uh, we are one company who have entered quite late into the industry. Like, for example, our flagship product, Equito 7G, which was launched in February and March, and there was a lockdown. And in spite of all these uh, challenges and being a late entrant, and today, the, uh, the 7G sales are very, very good uh, relative to any other high-speed model which is out there in the market in terms of performance, cost innovation. So the number of outlets we have appointed, like in you know, all exclusive kind of uh, philosophy the company believes in. So as on today, we have 84 outlets being operational across the country, like from Kanyakumari to Kashmir, uh, Srinagar, like, you know, we were able to appoint outlets. And we have recently got an outlet opened in Nepal and one outlet is going to very soon come in Bangladesh as well. So, uh, so in terms of the bandwidth, uh, the regions and everything, uh, so we are able to touch like, you know, almost all the states except NCR is one state is uh, pending for us. But otherwise, uh, and the approach also like, you know, the company has taken is we are, we want to grow step by step and study. We want to observe the market. We want to observe how our vehicles are performing, although we have seen a spike of demand for pure EV vehicles, but we want to uh, go in a study manner, uh, the way automotive industry has evolved in this country, uh, focus more on the, the supply chain, focus more on the cost innovation, product development, R&D. So all have to be continuous, go together and in tandem at the end of the day, the valuation should come to the consumer. Okay. So, uh, uh, you know, about dealerships, uh, there's one uh, question that I wanted to ask you. Uh, the multi-brand format is quite popular with a lot of EV dealerships, yeah. right? And uh, somehow Pure has not really adopted that model. So what are your thoughts on the multi-brand dealer? So the multi-brand dealer, uh, like, you know, when we talk from the dealer's perspective, it might sound found, but, but when we, because Pure EV, it's not just like, you know, we are into sales of some product because at the end of the day, we want to build a brand. To the consumer the consumer is buying these products like you know as on today or in the future like you know when we talk about referrals or anything natural branding and all so a lot of work has to grow organically so that is where like you know we don't want the conflict of interest to come from the touch point or the placement because whenever industry has to grow in that this kind of two-wheeler market the product placement is also plays a lot of role so the product placement is the dealer here. So, so there uh, we feel that uh, for a company like Pure EV, the multi-brand approach will not work because we want to build a, a long-term brand uh, in this uh, industry by launching uh, new models, like you know, working on new product developments and offering better and better technology continuously to the clients actually. So it is not like some kind of mobile phone or the laptop, the way our approach is. So we want to have a emotional connect with the dealer as well as to the client. And it has to be a long term journey. And that is where we have a philosophy that the dealership outlet has to be a standalone. Okay, great. Uh, so coming from uh, moving over from dealership sales to the other aspect, which I know that the company is focused a lot on, which is service. Yes. So uh, we just want to know. Uh, what kind of preventive uh, maintenance practices do you recommend for electric vehicles? So here, when we come to the preventive uh, maintenance, actually, the first thing is uh, the slogan, whatever is floating around in the industry that, you know, these are maintenance free vehicles. It is true from the, the maintenance is required to do a like, you know, typical ICE vehicle, petrol vehicle. But here also, like, you know, when we have so many electrical related systems, electronic systems and battery being the major cost element, which is driving actually. So the, what company had been promoting, especially in the recent time, since last three to six months, like uh, let all the connections be checked. Like, you know, whenever we call this four free services is what we are offering 
through the dealer to the client actually. So we are strongly encouraging each client to avoid those four services. At that time, let it's not just about like simply some tire cleaning is happening, some water wash is happening. Let all the systems be checked. Like, you know, one is the manual check, like as per the protocol sheet, which we train the dealer technicians. I, I will come to that separately, like, you know, how we are training the dealer technicians. Another is whatever the tools and equipments we are uh, recommending uh, dealer. And now, like, you know, slowly we are going to enforce also to the dealer that, you know, these kind of tools and equipment should be there which can gauge and uh, judge the like you know the health of like you know majority of these electrical systems as well as the battery so that is where like you know 80 to 90 percent of the uh, problems long term problems critical failures like you know i am saying like critical failures can definitely be avoided on the most expensive elements that is the battery charger controller and motor so then when we come to the regular maintenance works yes mechanical maintenance work already the the industry practice are very well laid out, like you know, in terms of uh, brake oil, fluid, uh, the tightening of certain hardware and all, rusting, avoiding all these things. So there are, uh, it comes under the preventive maintenance only, but at least there the guidelines, the knowledge, awareness is higher at the technician level. So what we as a OEM, our role is very larger at the preventive failures for the, especially on the battery and other electrical systems. And whatever the, let's say like, you know, some failures have happened sporadically at, uh, at the pan India level, like, you know, it could be some, uh, some, uh, small capacitor failure in the converter or some small MOSFET failure in the charger or some other failure in the BMS or controller or motor. So what we have taken approach is like, you know, we started alerting dealers as well as in a general call. Also, we started, uh, alerting the clients also not alert. We started like conveying that like, you know, these kind of failures uh, we are noticing. Uh, if you have noticed, like, you know, uh, you take a check and take it to the nearby dealer point. And there we are doing a lot of knowledge dissemination also. What a company has taken recently is every dealer uh, is strongly recommended and supposed to send minimum one or two technicians to the factory for a training of three to four months. We have a detailed schedule from day one onwards what they will do. Like, you know, they will work on EV assembly line at, across different 11 stages. They'll work with the service department also, like, you know, when we attend the service calls in uh, Hyderabad city, actually. And in the battery production room on certain elements, not on all the elements, actually, wherever, like, you know, changing some connector, changing the BMS, uh, doing some basic soldering activities and doing some basic troubleshooting activity with certain equipments, which we are planning to offer from January, February onwards to the dealers, actually. So all this training, the human talent pool is what we want to offer as a dividend to the dealer actually. So here, what we are committing to the dealer also, like, you know, when these technicians are here at the factory for three to four months, we want to take care of their basic uh, stipend or salary accommodation and uh, food so that the dealer is not taking a hit because he's expending the resource with the company for a long term advantage. So one is like, you know, preventive maintenance. Yes. Like, you know, having a protocol, theoretical sheets, manuals, like, you know, that as a company, we are continuously working only because new models are getting added, like, you know, new surprises, new supply chain, new components. So upgrades are like continuous every three to six months, there is an upgrade. So the knowledge dissemination is happening continuously. Like, you know, that is where we want these people to physically be at the factory because earlier we were trying, trying all these online mode and everything. It was working out to that extent. But it was not to the full extent. Now we felt that the, the overall scenario in the country is also safe enough for the technicians to come to the factory and uh, do this training program. Because I, we firmly feel creating a, hum, a trained, knowledgeable human resource can avoid a lot of issues because there are judgmental calls also. It's actually a normal failure or critical failure. So lack of judgment also what happens is they determine it as a critical failure. Many times the component is sent back here and 30 to 40 percent of the cases in terms of converter or all these like, you know, electronic failures, like, you know, it, the component works actually like, you know, maybe the failure is some loose connection or MCB has gone wrong, some small element, some like, you know, some all these like, you know, very sensitive connectors are there, like some pin has gone wrong. So, so the judgmental call also is very, very important because it's, it's an emerging industry, new dealer, new company, new vehicle, new user, new technology. So the knowledge dissemination, practical knowledge, the judgmental call is what we believe is very, very important to prevent the failures.
to provide better uh, service also quicker and accurate service